Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. You know who this is? This is Alex, and we're live from Harlem in New York City, and it's called The Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. He lives in San Francisco, California, my old hometown. Boy, am I jealous. Should I be? You are? Well... You wouldn't be jealous now. Cause Is it that bad? It's that, well, it's, a, it's your favorite time of year. The Blue Angels will be in soon. Oh, I always love that. <laughs> the Blue Angels, in case people who are listening to us aren't familiar, are a bunch of assholes who get in airplanes and start flying over cities doing aerobatics. And, I, and at any moment, one could crash into another. Okay and then fall on the human population and kill everybody in sight. It's, yeah, it's insanity. Well, what would happen here, here, here's what would happen. Once a year, they say, you know, the Blue Angels are going to be performing on Saturday because it's Fleet Week. And I, to begin with, that sounds like everybody gets enemas. Um, <laughs> it's Fleet Week, and they're going to, everybody on Friday, they're going to be rehearsing. I'm going, so we're not supposed to pay attention to all the stuff that's going on over our heads because they're rehearsing? What if I look now and then don't watch the show? Am I still seeing the same <laughs> show? I mean, what is this rehearsing crap? So what they would do is they would, uh, I would do my show in the morning. I had to get up at a god-awful time of like 5 o'clock in the morning. So what I would do is I would go home and I would get a nap. So that I could stay up to a reasonable hour, like 11 o'clock, midnight, right? And then I'd get six hours sleep, but I had had the two hours sleep, whatever, you understand. So then they do their rehearsal, and they do it starting at noon, which is about my little sleepy time, okay? Mm -hmm. And they start going over the marina and over the city of San Francisco. Now, mind you, the actual show they do goes just over the bay. Am I right about that? Yeah, well, well, they go over the city and the bay. Yeah, but they basically, for this, they go over the city, and they're coming, like, within inches of buildings, you know? Well, it, feels like, it feels like the roof is being peeled off your building. Exactly, and I'm trying to go to sleep, and these assholes... <laughs> Are, are doing their aerobatics. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And everybody goes to me, it's terrific, it's wonderful. I go, for you, I'm trying to sleep. No, it's cool, it's just the wrong place. It's the wrong, and I, I you know, come on. You know, you, you're not going to do that in war because you get shot down in a second, you know. But anyway, so so they, I would complain about this, and everybody would say to me, "Oh, you're just you know you're just an old fart, you know you don't you know you don't like a good time." So I kept putting yep. them down on the air. And one one year they call me up, and they say we'd like to let you fly with the Blue Angels. <laughs> Now, uh, most people, if you were got that offer, you would immediately take them up on it, right? Uh-huh. Not me, because I knew what they were going to do if they got me in one of their airplanes. I was going to be thrown up in my mask. Yeah. You know? I mean, they were not going to take me up and just say, oh, we'll do a little flyover, we'll do a little flip here, you know, get ready. No, they'd do everything they could to make me vomit. So I turned them down. People went, you turned that down? I went, absolutely. I know what they were up to. I didn't trust them. You were right. <laughs> well, you know, to begin with, could you fly in one of those planes without vomiting? Uh, I don't know. When you pull, pull those G-forces, they said it gets pretty bad. Yep. 
Yep. Now, the thing is, I don't throw up. Do you throw up? Uh, no. No, I can't. I can't remember the last time I threw up. Okay. I uh, may have had a little acid reflux from time to time, but n- never thrown up. Uh, I just, and the reason I don't throw up, tell me this isn't the best philosophy. The reason I don't throw up is I throw up if I, th- I, I throw up if I throw up. Do you get what I'm saying? Throwing up makes me throw up. Yeah. So, so because throwing up makes me feel uncomfortable, I just don't do it. And I, so I can't remember, I can't tell you the last time I threw up, but, um, you never had food poisoning. Uh, even, even in extreme cases of that, I don't throw up. The only time really? I, wow. I tell you, the only time I ever threw up is one morning. It was the strange thing is when, when, when I was taken to the, uh, um, emergency room, uh, I got up in the middle of the night because I felt nauseous. And I ran into the bed bathroom because I really felt I was going to throw up. Now, I don't know what caused this, but I have a doctor who thinks it has something to do with, uh, with uh, vertigo. But anyway, I go into the bathroom. I fall, hit my head on the sink, and now I'm flat on my back, and I'm nauseous. I feel like I've got to throw up, you know. And finally, the emergency people come. The ambulance comes and gets me. And as they're hauling me down, I'm going off to the side, actually throwing up. There was something that made me just nauseous. And I don't think we ever came to terms with what it was. But that's the one time I remember being very nauseous. And, in fact, when they were trying to move me in the gurney going down, I, could, I said, take it easy because the movement is making me want to throw up. And then I would throw up by turning my head over the gurney and throwing up. That's the last time I remember ever throwing up. And, and uh, then they gave me a complete, you know, physical at the hospital, you know. And, of course, then they found other stuff, you know. Oh, we think maybe you have leukemia or something like that, which it turned out I had. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, uh, uh, I I just, but I I hate throwing up, just hate it. So they gave me some kind of whatever, and it settled my stomach. It stopped me from throwing up. It got me a little high. That was nice, too. And uh, that was the end of our... uh, of our um, uh, little adventure. Uh, have you had? Have you ever had to go to the emergency room in an ambulance? Not in an ambulance, no. You've had to go to the I, emergency room, though. For a kidney stone, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, well, I went to the emergency room for a kidney stone. I stayed there for three and a half days, I think. Until, really? Until Jeez. they could get the kidney stone to pass. They kept me, kept putting fluids in me, kept putting fluids in me, you know. Yeah, I think they send you home now. Well, uh, yeah, but um, they, they, I think it was big enough that they wanted me to stay there. Oh, okay. And uh, they put me up in, uh, uh, what's, what, where do, what are they, what's the name of that uh, part of the hospital where cancer patients are? Uh, oncology? Onco- well, not oncology, but they put you up in, um, oh, I can't Death. remember. Death row? Well, whatever the term is, I, they said, uh, here you are. And I went, am I dying? <laughs> and they went, no, you're not dying, but we didn't have room for you anywhere else in the hospital. And I went, well, this is pretty good because for the dying people, they give them the big TV set. Oh, okay. you know, <laughs> that's a good room. <laughs> a great room, you know. The only problem with it was I had to hear the people who were dying from cancer in on the rest of the ward. You yeah. Know. Oh, I'm dying. I feel I'm, yeah. I'm going. Jeez, you know. I feel, I felt like kind of a pussy being there. So what are you in for? Well, I got a kidney stone. <laughs> you know. What do you got? Well, I'm I'm I have lung cancer. <laughs> oh, fine. You know, so. so you passed it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I passed it, and uh, they uh, in a in a bloody urine uh, urination, uh, and uh, they then sent me home. 
Yeah. And did you have the severe pain with it when you uh, before I, the onset? I, I can't remember if there was pain or not. You know, um, I don't think there was a lot of pain. I think it just Maybe. passed. You know. Okay. Uh, don't they? They didn't do something which I heard they were doing, in which they kind of take sonic waves and they blast it. Oh, I had that. Uh, I had that done. My second one. Yeah, that, supposedly that just dissolves them really fast. I don't know why they didn't do that with me. Uh, it's called the lithropeter. They hit you with sound waves, and uh, it doesn't. They have to be careful because it can break a bone. Oh, but really? But it doesn't. It doesn't hurt soft tissue, and they keep they zero in on the kidney stone and. Uh, I was on the table, and the guy's hitting me with these waves, and he's looking through this thing. He goes, oh, he said, it just broke in half. And then uh, three days later, I peed it out. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are talking about health again, you know. I know. Well, yeah. it's yeah. the, the worst you- part I heard. I know some of my friends have had kidney stones in the past couple of years. They go... Now they go through your penis, through the bladder with some device and grab the stone and pull it out. Oh, jeez. God. Yeah. Well, it's just a stone that uh, emits from your kidney, and then it goes slowly out, you know, and finally it, you do pee it out. But, uh, you know, it, it, in the meantime, you got some – that was pretty bad pain, you know. Very bad. It was like yeah. one of the worst pains I've ever had. But anyway, the thing was, when they sent me to the emergency room and they got the ambulance to pick me up, uh, I I feel cheated. Because, you know, I'm sitting here in this apartment, I can't tell you how many times a day, ambulances go by my apartment running their sirens at full blast. When I went to the hospital, I'm in the ambulance no siren. And I felt cheated. Yeah. You know? No no siren. Completely silent. And the same thing was true. I had to send Marjorie to the hospital in an ambulance. An ambulance these days, by the way, for us, is a normal form of transportation. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we, uh, she had to go to the hospital, and I got in the ambulance with her, and, and no siren. I'm going, what are we, a no siren family? Is that what this is about? And I, I, when they were taking me to the emergency room, I wanted to get there as fast as possible because I was throwing up and feeling very uncomfortable. Um, no siren, you know. So I, what do you have to do to get a siren? And what's an ambulance ride cost, 5000 Dollars? No, it costs about it costs about seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars. But your insurance takes care of it, you know. So, it, it, you know, they, that's why they charge that much. And by the way, you order an ambulance, five of them show up. It's the first one that can get to the door <laughs> yeah. and get up to the apartment that gets the job. So they're, they're like all, cab drivers. <laughs> well, they're all they're all you know they all have their own little ambulance company, and when a call goes out, they all show up. You know. Wow, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, isn't that wonderful, folks? You tune into this program and teach you everything you need to know about ambulances. <laughs> you know. So, uh, but. Uh, you know, I, I haven't. I got to say that's maybe the worst thing that's ever happened to me, um, so far as having to go to a hospital and have something done. You know, I mean, I've had worse stuff. I had the prostate cancer, and then I had the I have the uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, the leukemia. And uh, but my leukemia is the. The good leukemia. <laughs> the good, the good leukemia. Yeah, you don't have. I got news for you. You have the good. You're lucky you got this leukemia. It's called uh, chronic lymph, lymphatic, uh, uh, whatever, uh, leukemia, and um, they say it's just you know they just check me to make sure that I don't have any symptoms, 
And then when I start having symptoms, he says, we give you a little pill. That's it. You know, okay. and everything will correct itself. So I'm going, that's not bad. There's many kinds of leukemia, I guess. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are, there are very deadly forms of leukemia. But this is very common. It's very common among older people, you know. So I'm sitting here with leukemia, and I can't tell I've got anything. I'm, you know, whatever I've got, it's something else because, you know, I'm dizzy all the time and things like that. But that could just be the fact that I'm 84 goddamn years old, you know. And you're how old now? You're 70, 71? Uh, uh, 72 at the end of the... Yeah, like oh God! Yeah, just yesterday I was seventy-two. <laughs> you just yesterday you were seventy-two. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday to uh, you! Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, do I have? I mean, do I have some music here? I wonder if I have some music. Let me see here. Happy birthday, son! There, there yeah, we I'm go. Odd. Can you hear that? No. It says music may, oh, it says uh, music detected and may be suppressed. Disable voice isolation to make sure everybody can hear it. So maybe um, the audience didn't hear it either. I don't know. I don't think so. Well, anyway, screw you. Anyway, uh, so, um, uh, you know, I mean, what was, what was the worst thing that ever medically ever happened to you? I guess a kidney stone, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because when I was a, certainly the most pain. Yeah, when you were a kid, though, did you get any of the kid stuff? No, I still have my tonsils. Yeah. So I, uh, I don't recall being. Oh, I did have uh, when I was four. I had pneumonia and almost died. Oh wow! That got really bad, but I don't remember much about it. Oh wait a minute! Now you you, you got hit by lightning. I got hit by lightning, yeah. Yeah, and you actually, do you still have that uh, that little discoloration in your hair? That, I think, is gone. It was a little gray patch behind my ear that came in shortly after I got hit, so I don't know if it was connected to that or not. But you had it for years and years and years, yeah, right? Yeah, and I had it, there's one in the front of my uh, hair, too, and that's since fallen out so long ago. Look, uh, have you started going gray? No, I just, after I got hit by lightning, I had a little patch, this was in high school, mm -hmm. right in the front of my head, and then one behind the ear. And they both came in after I got hit. So, so you got touched by God, right? I guess, or <laughs> molested by God. You, what were you doing, just standing there and all of a sudden? I, I was closing up. My mother told me to close the window because a thunderstorm was coming up, and... And as soon as I got to the window, it hit the window and knocked me 15 feet. And oh, but it never actually physically hit you. I didn't get burned, but I just saw white, and I heard the loud sound of my life. And it, I mean, I flew back 15 feet, so something hit me. You know, the odds of that happening have got to be, uh, the numbers have got to be very large on that, you know? I know, same year my friend in high school got hit, uh, he got hit by lightning on a golf course. He got badly burned. So it was two where, in one where, class. Where, where, where did this happen? Where were you living? In Ohio. In Ohio. Maybe that's a big lightning area, right? Well, the, mid, the Midwest for sure, yeah. Wow. Wow. And so and you. he was on the golf course with golf clubs, so that uh, the metal attracts the lightning. So wait a minute, you're 72 and you haven't got gray hair yet? No, it's, uh, it's still, my hair is so dark, People, I, everyone thinks I'm dying it, and I'm not. So. Wow, that's amazing. That's what I've been told, so I don't know, does, does everybody go gray? I don't know. I think some people don't go gray. You know, well, not, I, no. well, well, let me see, you asked the question, and you, don't, you haven't gone gray. No. Okay, so there's your answer. There's apparently, <laughs> apparently some but it people, must be rare. I d I don't know. You know, I, I mean, mean, I I usually you you especially after COVID. During COVID, people couldn't get to barbers and get their hair colored, 
So they came oh. out the other side of COVID gray, especially women. A lot of women, a lot of women actresses and so on, suddenly came out gray on the other side of COVID because they couldn't get their hair done. Marjorie. Cool. You know, stopped coloring her hair during COVID and came out of COVID. Uh, uh, she came out of COVID, an old lady. So, you know, it was amazing. Well, I remember 10 years ago, I was on the road with Dana and uh, we were getting something to eat. And he said, God, your hair is still like chocolate brown. And I go, yeah. And it, he was just stunned when he found out I didn't dye it. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And so that little uh, that little touch of God has seems to have gone away. Yeah, I'll have to check the one behind the ear. I, maybe that's still there. I'll try to get a mirror and look at that. But so. that was there right after you got hit by lightning, right? Shortly after, yeah. You didn't physically get hit by lightning. The window pane got hit by lightning. I guess, yeah. I didn't get burned, but... Uh... And it didn't break the window pane or anything? No. Wow. That's amazing. That is just amazing. You are a, a special person, Larry. Special person. Well, I just remember lying on the floor and my the hair was all frizzed back. <laughs> How old were you when this happened? It was 1966, so I was about 14. You're 14. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. I'm. I'm... I, I remember. Be- I remember running downstairs later and yelling at my mother, why do you have me close? <laughs> <laughs> Did she feel guilty about it? Yeah. she. Uh, but we, yeah, we get those thunderstorms. Like in the summer, you get them all the time back there, so they're not uncommon. So people do get hit. But uh, Let me ask you, was it a short time after that that you went into stand-up comedy? Uh, <laughs> No, no, it was a. God, it must have been. Whatever possessed you to do that, you know? I mean, you picked a profession that has lasted a lifetime now for you. When when did you, at what age did you start doing stand up? I got in the late, like mid to late 20s, so I think. Oh, really? uh, I wouldn't have gotten into it if. I would have dreamed about it if I'd just seen it on TV. I, when I thought about getting into it was when I first saw it live, when I saw Bobby Slayton and guys like that at the yeah. punchline in 1980. Yeah, but let me ask you this. What were you doing to earn a living before that? I was a payroll clerk for the government. Really? Mm-hmm. Why does that not, uh, does not surprise me? Yeah, I was good with numbers. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you, uh, I, I just imagine a payroll clerk, Larry Bubbles Brown, they go together. <laughs> so you so you saw these comedians, and what did you say? I could do that? I thought maybe I could do that. And then I, when I saw Slate, I said, God, these guys are really good. And then I saw this one girl who was so bad one night. I said, I got to try this. And she gave me the impetus to get on stage because I I thought I can't be as bad as she is. Do you remember who the comedian was? Her name was Susie Crum. <laughs> Good name for a comedian. Yes. And she still she might worked? not. I don't. She disappeared shortly after that, so I don't know what happened to her. But well, uh, she probably realized she wasn't very good at it and went and found something else to do with her life. Yeah. But then, uh, so you then, how did you get on stage the first time? I mean, did you have to, did you go somewhere like the Holy City Zoo where they... I kept going to the punchline because they had the, they'd put people up on Sunday nights and then somebody, uh, I was talking to a comic and he said, oh, you don't want to go up here the first time. He said, go to the Holy City Zoo. No, oh, okay. The Holy City Zoo was this club. I, I don't know how to describe it. You could fit about three people in there. It was smaller than your apartment. It was smaller than my apartment. And what they did is it was an open mic. They mm-hmm. just let anybody up. Of course, it was a big question of when they put you up. If you were Dana Carvey, you went on at 8 o'clock at night. And if you were Larry Bubbles Brown, you went on at 3 in the morning. You know, uh, But it still, it was uh, a, an open mic club. And people would go there literally to work material out. And uh, they did they pay? They didn't pay comics, did they? 
Not for the open mic, no. No, no. So uh, did they ever have shows where they had headliners, or was everything Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, right before I went on, I saw New York Night, January of 81. They had Bobby Slayton, uh, Billy J., Steve, Stephen Pearl, and uh, Tom Finnegan. It was actually a great show. And so those were the beginnings of Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah, those were the beginnings. Anyway, we've run out of time here again. Would you believe that? We just Another walk down in memory lane. Walk down memory lane mixed in with a little medical a little stuff. A little lightning, a little stand-up. <laughs> and I thank you very much, Larry thank Bubbles you. Brown. See you next week. Bye. Okay. I was in the other room. And I was looking at the wrong watch, the wrong clock, and uh, this is what happens when you're not paying attention. But I think I came, was there much time missing? I mean, I'll have to ask my people here. Um, let me see here. Where are we? Usually, you see, I go in the other room, I do stuff, I uh, watch some stuff. And then I come back, and about the time that this is going to be over with, and I went into the bathroom uh, to use the bathroom. I figured I had like four minutes left or something like that, and I didn't. Oh, well. Mm. Screw it. I don't care. Okay? Let me see here. What do we got? Have we got... Uh, oh, I've got to get rid of something here. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're ready to, I think we're ready to go. I think we'll bring in some of our, some of our people, and we'll, uh, we'll see what they have to say here. Um, let me see here. There we go. Uh, are they coming in? Oh, hold on. Um, oh, I see what I did wrong. I'm never doing, I'm not doing things right at all. Okay, here we go. Admit all. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Uh-huh. Okay, we got Josh and we got um, Charlie. How, how much time did I miss here? Had it just ended? Had Bubbles just ended? Or was there uh, I don't know. I, I turned that off a second ago. Oh, okay. They're not eight, I mean, about five minutes ago, so I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, you were still talking to me when I did that, so I didn't know there was a gap. Oh, okay, good. Good. Uh, Charlie, did you notice yep. a gap? Did you notice a gap there? Or? Oh, yeah, it was about 30, 35 seconds. 35 seconds, something like that. Okay, everybody, I'm, I'm sorry. Hello, Steve. How are you? You're in your truck. Mm -hmm. uh, How are you? How's your health? That's good. It's good? Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me... Uh, here comes Jeff Stein. Okay. And, uh, uh, well, that was the first time I ever forgot the... I didn't get in here on time because I was looking at a clock that was uh, wrong yep. in the other room. <laughs> I always assume that my my Amazon clock is going to be perfect, and I guess it wasn't. Uh, but anyway, I got in here. We lost about thirty seconds. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll live with that. Anyway, mm. I'm screwing up all the way around, so, so. I ain't getting any younger. Let's see here. Was there somebody else that was trying to get in? No, I guess not. Okay. Well, hello to everybody. How how be you? How, how's everything up in Canada, Steve? Oh, it's fine. Hmm? But I'm not in Canada right now. I'm in Nevada. You're in Nevada? Okay. Oh, wow. Whereabouts in Nevada? Uh, it's right at the California state line. Do you know uh, Whiskey Pete's Casino? Yeah, I think so. What's the name of the town? Prim. Prim? It's right at the state line on uh, California on I-15. Oh, really? I, 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 don't, uh, I don't know that town, to be honest with you. And I thought I knew everything it's, up around that area. There's nothing there. It's just a casino with a truck stop. 
Yeah. And across the other side of the interstate, there's a uh, old roller coaster and what I guess was a outlet mall that appears not to be open anymore <laughs> for some reason. It's an inlet mall now. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, excuse me, folks. I'm sniffling again tonight. I've, we've got, uh, I've had, had uh, problems with the uh, uh, allergies again. So, anyway. Uh, so, uh, let me see here. Uh, how you doing, Charlie? How you, how you looking at things? Things looking up for you? Do you think we're in good shape? Do you think... Uh, Doing pretty good. Or do you think right now we're going through a period of time where everybody's taken uh, Kamala somewhat for granted? I don't know. I don't think it's a done deal, but uh, supposedly her poll numbers are going back down. Going back down? Yeah. Why would they be uh, going back down? The national, the national polling numbers... Uh, I think yesterday or so it looked like they had increased. I saw a, a new national poll that had her up 49-45. Yeah. Well, that's national, but I'm talking about in the, in the um, what do you call it, the uh, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Wisconsin. She's, she's trailing in Michigan now. She's trailing in Pennsylvania. She's trailing in North Carolina. No, but she's but not. I, that all, I saw in, all I saw in, in Pennsylvania is she's even. <laughs> Yeah, that it's even, and it has been even for weeks now. Yeah, I hadn't seen anything where she was going losing any ground. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm just saying I hadn't seen it. But yeah, I, I'm just some things I saw online earlier today. Hmm. Well, well, we're going to be going to France, and if uh, she if she doesn't win, uh, we're not coming back. Yeah. I mean, I wonder who who it was from or how accurate it is. But I mean, I hadn't. I hadn't seen any of that. Like, you know, the national polling looked good. And, I mean, I actually read a story yesterday that uh, while Trump leads in Ohio, fine, you know, comfortably, uh, she had cut his margin in Ohio significantly down from where it was and from where it had been in the past. So, yeah, I heard that earlier this like week. Like, he only yeah. leads her in Ohio by, like, uh, some polls have her at four points and or him at four points and some have her at six but losing by six, but he won by like 10 and 11 points in the last couple elections. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, I told you, I had seen just anecdotally, you know, like way more stuff out for her than I'd ever seen for anyone in the past. Mm -hmm. And despite all the nonsense with him here, you know, it still had Sherrod Brown leading that idiot Bernie Moreno for the U.S. Senate race here by a couple of points. And by huge numbers when it comes to abortion and, you know, some other issues. So, uh, you know, Moreno's unfavorables were super high, stuff like that. I mean, I just thought that polls having her at a less than five point deal here in this state was, you know, pretty big. Because like I said, he won it by just over, he won it by over 10 points in the last election. I mean, so even though she may still lose the state, just taking somewhere that's a Trump stronghold... And cutting that in half, to me, is decent evidence that she's making and should be making very good inroads in places where people are more open minded about the Trump situation. You know, I guess maybe not. Do you think the polls are going to look like assholes again this year? Well, I, I don't know if it's going to be that bad because it, all of them are at least kind of just putting their stuff out there and they're not acting like things are done and decided. So I don't know if it's going to go that far, but. I think there's a chance that she's going to come out better than their the polls are showing. Yeah, me too. Like I don't I don't think that it's going to be they're going to be wrong and like Trump's going to win a uh, you know big or something like that. I, I I think that if they end up not being accurately reflected, in my opinion, it will be more so that they do not act accurately reflect just how well she may very well do. Yeah. Maybe that's just me wishing that it'll happen, but... Well, I mean, it seems to me... I just feel that way, you know? As though this would be a rather hard one to do polling on. I mean, the method of polling is kind of simple. It's asking a simple question and you giving a simple answer. 
Now, the kind of answer that somebody's going to give out in the middle of the street as they're answering a question or on the telephone, when other people are listening to them, may be different, you know. I mean, do you think that wives of, of big Trump guys are going to want to tell a pollster that they're for Ka right. Kamala? But when they go into that voting booth, it's a whole different story, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, you know, I I just don't know if they're reflecting the amount of positivity that she may have connected to her when the election comes around. Mm -hmm. Possibly, you know, it just seems that way. But, you know, because I just can't believe that some of the, the things that we see, like Brown being favorable in Ohio, you know, like... Larry Hogan not winning in Maryland right now by a lot. I mean, it looks like he's getting beat badly in Maryland. Um, I saw something yesterday that I thought said it had the, his, that also broke up by like nine points. You know, uh, Ted Cruz maybe going yeah. down. Into, I mean, I just can't imagine that all of those things are going to happen. And it's that's not going to be good to great for her what do you just, what do you hear in texas charlie I imagine that, but oh, right now uh all red is, is is uh ahead 45 44 on cruise first time this, he's ever pulled ahead of him yeah mm. you think that might be, bode well for for uh kamala in texas but, yeah because i think that's gonna bring out a lot more democratic voters and the people mm -hmm. are going to come out want to vote for Allred because they hate Cruz. They're just going to go ahead and vote for Kamala, too. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, it just, I just couldn't, I mean, like I said, this is just kind of how I'm thinking about it. I just couldn't imagine that, you know, they they would win in Maryland, that Brown would get reelected, that Ted Cruz would get beat. You know, and, and, and a few other little things that we're seeing and all that would happen, but then Harris would lose. Mm. Like, I just can't imagine that all those people making those decisions at the same time wouldn't also vote for Harris and would vote for Trump. I just can't. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you can't you stand Ted see Cruz, somebody I have voting no idea what kind of person you, you, you couldn't see would somebody, vote against Ted Cruz and for Trump. You couldn't yeah. see somebody in Texas voting against Ted Cruz and voting for Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, but I, but I just can't imagine there's that it's that many of them. I mean, yeah. an individual, sure. But I mean, as a large trend, as a large group, I just can't imagine it. I just like, I can't imagine people here going and voting for Sherrod Brown and voting for Trump. That's a slight bit more possible here. But I don't, you know, but not, again, not in a huge trend. I, I mean, I definitely don't see it in Texas. I can't imagine it in Maryland. You know, and I, I mean, I think, you know, she was going to win Maryland anyway. So I'm not saying all these things have a bearing on the outcome. I'm just saying as evidence of how we're sort of seeing people leading, you know, like I, I think I saw some national polling where when people were asked, you know, what party would they prefer control uh, both houses of Congress? Democrats were up by like two points, you know, which look, isn't big, right? I mean, that's a tie, but I'm just saying that's just another little piece of evidence. Mm -hmm. that I just can't imagine people are going to go in there and that they're thinking that way. And then they're going to say all oh, voting for Trump. I think the people that are going to vote for Trump this time are his people. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work last time. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work in the midterms. And it barely worked you know, to defeat Hillary, right? I mean, then it was new and it was like a surprise, but it barely worked. It worked. He won, but super close. So I don't know. I just can't, I just can't imagine that. But I mean, shoot. I mean, well, uh, 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 <laughs> gotta go vote. There's only thing I know to tell you. I mean, Nate, no matter what you have to do that day, you have to get yourself to vote or, you know, vote before. I mean, whatever, but yeah, there's no excuse really. To me, I mean, you know, people have to go vote. Well, I Nate mean, Silver uh, has her at 48.4. Well, has her up 2.5%. Uh, yeah. Nationally. 
Uh, if you I look, think, yeah. Hmm? I think Trump's going to get destroyed. I, I think that this Roe versus Wade thing, the women yeah. are going to come out and just vote against them. I mean, um, I, I, I really don't think it's going to be that close. I know they say it's going to be super close. I just don't think so. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I mean, you have he has his base, which I think is shrunk. <laughs> and um, he lost last time with his base. So I don't see how he's going to win, just mm -hmm. like Josh said. I don't think I don't see it. Harris is slightly ahead in uh, Pennsylvania, but it's but forty-eight to forty-seven point four, so it's about a half a point ahead. You remember both times? Both times Reagan won, the, it was close, or he was behind, and then it was a landslide victory for him in both elections. Yeah, mm -hmm. the polls are like. <laughs> yeah. Polls have been uh, messed up for decades. Yeah, they don't, they don't, people lie, they change their mind, they don't ask the right people, <clears throat> they only I call landlines. Yeah. I think it's much more difficult for these people to get good data because they don't get to see people very often as compared yeah. to what they used to. People yeah. work at home. That's different, first of all. Nobody knows their phone number anymore. Yeah. They don't use their phones. If they have them, a lot of them have gotten rid of it. Yeah. They work on a cell phone or a computer. Yep. So there's a whole technical changes that changes the world. Here. Yeah, they haven't been very good in adapting to that, by the yeah. way. People so used really to go to work every them. day. Yeah. You we... know, they had to walk... They had to park their car, they had to walk into their office, whatever. They don't go there anymore. Maybe they go one day a week. It's a very different world. Well, I, just voted, I just voted today. Uh, <laughs> well, we mailed in our ballots, you know. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be doing that uh, this week. I voted for Kamala because there was nobody else to vote for. <clears throat> there was, you know, I'm tired. I'm kind of tired of a country where we don't have a real choice, you know, where you have like two or three, mm -hmm. three or four leading candidates that you can vote for, you know. What is it like in Canada? You only have like two parties and that's it up there, uh, well, Steve? No, well, we have the Liberal Party, which is in power right now, run by the current fucking idiot, Trudeau, and we have the Progressive Conservative Party, which is led by Pierre Polyev, and there's the NDP, uh, led by Jagmeet Singh, which he's, I don't like him either, mm -hmm. um, and then there's uh, the Black Quebecois, which is the separatists. Yeah. Those are the four major, and there's a Green Party, but, but, but they, but there they are... never... They never make a, even a dent in the elections. They, they're always well so far behind. But at least you have somewhat of a larger choice yeah. to choose from, you know. Yeah. Like I say I didn't like either of these candidates. Okay, where am I going to go? I, I I don't like either. I don't. I'm not a fan of Trump, and I'm not a fan of Clamal. To be honest with you. Well, we don't care. You're Canadian, so. <laughs> <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> You know, uh, well, I don't. I just don't see how anybody could be for Trump. You know, I could see how somebody could be, not be for Kamala, but I can't see how they are for Trump. I mean, this is a morally the reprehensible human being. Well, by the uh, way, by the way, in a current speech that he gave to the Economic Club of Michigan yesterday, in the middle of his speech, he farted. Oh, yeah, it was great. I just saw that on Jimmy Kimmel just now, just before I called. I was watching well, I YouTube, been able and I to saw hear it. it yet in there, but it is in there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really quiet, but he, he pauses, and it's like, and then he keeps talking. It's yeah. really cool. Well, you know. Well, that's well, what you get. Well, you get, you'll, get a, you'll get a farting president. His... He's he's so convinced now 
that the Iranians are going to kill him, that his new thing now is that the Secret Service is just not adequate enough for him. And he needs to be flown around now in military aircraft <laughs> uh, with fighter escorts and... He would like his motorcade convoys to be anchored by uh, armored vehicles and personnel. So, in other words, he wants to drive around now like Gaddafi and Saddam and yeah. all the rest of his yeah. fucking friends. He's out of his he can't mind. act like a normal person. I mean, this is not made up shit. This is a lengthy article in the Washington Post <clears throat> citing emails from his campaign and their own statements on the record that they have outright officially asked for. And if they don't receive, they've already starting their whining, saying it's limiting how he can campaign because the Secret Service can't keep him safe without military protection. So if they don't give it to him, then he's not going to be able to campaign as much as Kamala. And that's just not fair. And he's crying because she gets all this. She gets to fly around in a military plane and gets protection and he can't understand that's because she's the sitting vice president of the United States and received similar protection that he was entitled to when he was president, but he yeah. is no longer president. He is now a private citizen. So <laughs> sorry, you know, and if they won't fly him around a military aircraft, the least they can do is escort his aircraft with other militants. In other words, he wants military uh, fighter aircraft to fly around with him because they're concerned the Iranians are going to kill him with a rocket. You know, it's like, Jesus Christ. Maybe, maybe the Jews will get him with space lasers. Maybe. Never know. <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, it really is. It's just like, that's what he wants, though. He wants this armored personnel carrier escort through town so he can get out like Gaddafi or, or, or Saddam, you know, or his homeboy down in Venezuela or any of the other rest of these fucking people that he hangs around with and think are so great. Well, uh, since the Democrats um, control the weather, maybe they'll create a tornado and knock his plane out of the sky. Yeah, I, I, well, I the latest thing is stories. that because of the, uh, the floods and the uh, storms and everything, they're wondering what they're going to do about the election in that part of the country. Yeah. Because people can't necessarily get their votes in. Uh, yeah. well, they have time, but they'll figure it out. I'm just glad we, as Democrats, strategically figured out exactly where all the Democrats live and where all the Republicans live. And if you notice, all the flooding is in highly Republican areas. Right. Yeah, yep. we did a great job. That's what I'm saying. The Democrats control the weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Marjorie Taylor Greene said. Yep. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. You know what scares me is Trump in 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 some of these swing states he he's placed um people in positions of power who are in charge of counting the vote who are yeah. election deniers. <laughs> Man, that's scary. That is scary. It's all very scary. And uh, if he loses, God forbid what's going to happen. Yeah. Especially if it's close. Well, you know, that's... You that's got room on your couch up in Canada, mm -hmm. Steve? Uh, huh? You got room in, on your couch up in Canada? In case we... need room on the couch. So that we can move up there because we're all yeah. going to be attacked by the crazy Republican, the MAGAs. I don't think he gets it. He's too nice. He's from Canada. He doesn't understand He's from Canada. Violence. He doesn't understand sleeping on your couch because you have to get <laughs> away from America. The last time that happened was the Vietnam War. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, this uh, is a deal. With, I mean, the thing with the protection is just setting him up. It's just another thing for him to yeah. say, I, I couldn't campaign, you know, and that's why I lost. He's setting up his loss thing like he did yeah. last time. Brainwashing yeah. all his followers. Another thing to add to his list, you know, so he can try to start another ride. Well, what if he wins? What's he going to say then? Oh, of course. Everything's yeah. fine. That proves it wasn't, there was no cheating this time. Right. <laughs> I mean, as stupid as he is, he's really smart at this kind of thing. Look, I don't <laughs> think he's going to win the popular vote. There's no question about no that way. in my mind. No, no way. He has no. never, ever won the popular vote. Not in this even country. close. Right. Yeah. You know, right. he's incapable of winning a popular vote in this country. Right. But, you know, it's that damn electoral college, which is the stupidest 
thing I can possibly imagine. I mean, why should all these other states feel inferior to some states that only have a small population, but they're this major, you know... Makes uh, no sense. Huh? Makes no sense at all in, the, in today's world. Yeah. Uh, the well, only problem I mean, is that it would require an amendment to the Constitution, and all those small states wouldn't ratify it, so we're screwed. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, what's what, you know? What is that? Uh, what what kind of credibility does that give to one man, one vote? You know, very little. It, little because it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't California matter. California and New I, York I, I don't matter. My, it, I sent in my ballot today. It doesn't matter. I could have not sent it in. I know California and New York, the most powerful states in the in the union, have no influence over the no, election. They, it, it, to show you that it's no influence. <laughs> They don't come here. Right. To, to, we don't even get commercials. You know, the only reason they came here was to do Howard Stern, Colbert, and who else did they do out of here? Yeah, because uh, it's national. Huh? And those are national shows. And those shows. are national. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they weren't in here, uh, you know, holding rallies or anything no. like that. We it's a waste never of see time. Them. We never see them. Never. So. In my entire lifetime, I've never seen Out it. in California, never. No, it's always Democrats, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so. At least I know that, like, my MAGA parents, their vote won't count, so that gives me some solace. You have MAGA parents? <laughs> oh, God. What? Well, how did that happen? <laughs> I ask myself that all the time. You know, when I was a little kid, we had this mock election and it was McGovern against Nixon. And I was so proud I voted for McGovern. And I went home and told my parents. And they told me that they voted for Nixon. I'm like, what? I was destroyed. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I, they, they watch Fox News. All, they're either watching usually, my dad either watches tennis people, or Fox News. People adapt the politics of their, adopt the politics of their, uh, of their parents. Initially, usually, yeah. at least. You know, they may then change their mind as they grow up. It's but. so weird because my 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 grandparents are immigrants, mm -hmm. um, and my and my parents are anti-immigrant. <laughs> uh, their <laughs> parents were immigrants. I mean, how none of it makes any be, sense. How can you be anti-immigrant in a country full of immigrants? Especially when your when your own parents were immigrants. Not really that uncommon, actually. I mean, you talk to some Mexicans and things like that, and they don't want any more. There, I mean, they they're here now, so they don't care. You know, they don't <laughs> that's want any true. More job that's true. They're, oh, they're, there is. They I mean, pulled you know. Latinos, and they find that they're pro uh, they're pro Trump. I can't have logical conversations huh? with them because they my, they get all emotional. So I it, it, I don't do it. I just don't. But I avoid it completely. They don't really want any more people coming and competing and, and, for their and job. And how about I this mean, whole thing about black men don't want to vote for Kamala? That's crazy. Oh, Jesus, is that that's true? A, that's what they say in the polling. That's why do you think? Why do you think Obama has been going through Pennsylvania and places like that and calling out black male voters who aren't for Kamala? Well, I wonder why that is. Well, Charlie, you're up. <laughs> Charlie's the expert on black males. That couldn't be more for Kamala than I am. <laughs> yeah, but what 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 is the reason why there's this fear that black men are? I don't understand why a single black man in this country, no matter how much money they have, would ever want to vote for Donald Trump. Oh, I'm, oh. yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, let's face it. Let's be honest, black men out there. At last, you'd finally have a uh, president you could jerk off to. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that's a that's a plus. Well, is I mean, there... the man would not rent any apartment in all his buildings to any black family. <laughs> Why would you want to vote for him? And what about the Central Park Five? Yeah. They and birtherism. Perfect. He said they should have executed him anyway. They must have done something well, else. Well, maybe we're yeah, just exactly. far, maybe we're a far more racist country than we'd like to believe. I think so. You know, he's given people permission to be racist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've come out of the woodworks since 2016. 
But people can be racist against their own kind, too. Yeah, yeah. Up in Canada, uh, Steve, is there any is there any amount of racism up there, or is it pretty much an, a non-racist country? No, we got our fair share of racists up here too. Oh, really? Oh. It's not any diff- not any different than down in the states. We just have a smaller population. The smaller population of blacks. Uh, yeah. But Trudeau's been bringing a lot of. Indians from India, and and he's going to be bringing in another million adding to our population, which is causing our pricing and our real estate to go skyrocket because we don't have enough housing to house all these people. We don't have the infrastructure, and it's causing <laughs> prices to just go up through the roof. Why is like, he doing it? I don't know. I don't know. Um, our population for the longest time as I was growing up hovered around 36, 37 million. Since he's been in office, it's gone up to about 41 and it's going to be 42 million. And he's been in office for nine years. Well, that, okay. that doesn't seem like an extraordinary amount for that amount of time. It is because through me growing up, in my teenage years and 20s and 30s, mm-hmm. it always hovered around 37. People would die. Some people would move into the country. Some people would move out of the country. Babies were born. It would stay kind of even. He brought, the, pro, uh, the population in Canada reached 40 million people. 11 months later, it was 41. Wow. We yeah. have brand new houses that have been built. Okay, that are being divided into apartments and they're charging a thousand bucks for a fucking room. For one room. Wow. A thousand bucks where for one room? In a hotel or no, just a house, like a brand new uh fancy house, like they're the houses up here like are insane. Mm-hmm. I bought my townhouse. We just recently sold it in April for two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, it sold for just under five hundred, and we didn't do a damn thing to it to renovate it to cause it to go up in value. It now, why, ha- why, ha- why is it? Why have they gone up in value? It can't just be because there are foreigners coming in. Because we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have enough houses to house everybody. That's the problem. Because mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't understand it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me that I mean, I understand that in a period of ten years, population can double. You know, um, yeah, gradually, no. So. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. gradual, not not that fast in that short amount of time. Yeah. Well, we just had Kevin like going show. From forty million yeah. to forty one in like not even a year. Yeah, no, we. By the year. way, Kevin just showed up. Uh, he's uh, you've been uh, lately been Bree. Uh, uh, Kevin, you've been uh, 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 doing your beard with your hairbrush. Are you getting ready for Christmas? <laughs> no, just make, just making it normal. <laughs> yeah, making it normal. No, it's just, it was hey, kind Bree. of messy, so I thought I'd brush it. Bree is eating again. We are, he Bree's only takes always us, eating. He only he only takes us it's out to lunch. Time there, guys. You know, what? <laughs> it's lunch time where he is in Malaysia. He's having yeah. his two dollar and fifty cent gourmet meal. <laughs> 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 that we sick? all drool you over. Well, what are you having for lunch? Well, I'm having the squiggly letter. Because I noticed that writing in the back of you. Can you read oh. that sign in back of you, by the way, Bree? See, directly in back of you, there's a sign. Can you hear me? Oh, there's too much noise oh, there. Messed up. <laughs> 
He's fixing uh, it. I have to say, Alex, I for, I'm traveling today again. I just got uh, and I'm going to the Philippines in about four hours. Mm -hmm. So I forgot to bring my noise canceling. I only have these regular ear cups, so it's kind of hard to hear. I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, but uh, no, what I was going to say, you can't hear me, so I don't understand it. I think he's frozen now. Yeah, now he's frozen. Hear no evil. <laughs> Oh, well, we'll wait for him to unfreeze. I can hear you a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He's you back. just froze up on us. Can you hear me now, Bree? Boy, you've got a bad signal in there. Bree, you've got bad, you got bad bandwidth. Can't even bad hear me bandwidth. tell him he's got I bad showed up bandwidth. At the right time. <laughs> Guess I showed up at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Get up, move up. Everybody Sleep. frees Sleep. up so he thinks we're all frozen too. <laughs> so anyway, we can't hear you. Your bandwidth is is yeah, crappy super crowded today. today, and I don't have my uh, my noise canceling. So I apologize for that. I'll be out of here in fifteen minutes. Okay. Anyway. How are you feeling about all of this, uh, Kevin? Uh, yeah, to be honest, yeah, I don't know what you've been talking about. What we've been talking about, because I just... What do you home. think we've been talking about? What is it? What do we, this show has been nothing but talking about this. The the polls are even. Don't, yeah. don't, don't slack. Pretend like they're even. And... That's what they want you to. I think that's what they're doing. Is they're like I said several times before, is that they are telling you they're neck and neck to get people off their asses to vote, or yeah. or or to just saying sure. it's neck and neck to get you to watch their lousy network. Well, mm -hmm. I think it'd get me to watch it. <laughs> I just want people to get out and vote. That's what you want. $5. You want people to get out and vote, and I think if you get the right. The right, uh, you know, if the Democrats get off their ass and vote, then they'll be fine. But yep. we know what's happened before. Well, Democrats who has the tendency vote. to stay home more? The Trump people or the Kamala Harris people? I would Harris. think it was the Trump people. I believe it's the Democrats. No, no, Democrats no. Democrats I'm working home. the polls. I'm going for my poll training tomorrow. But I will tell you that. These people sit back and they wait and they wait and they wait and they say, okay, it's Tuesday. Let's go. And they go down there and they, they attack. Yeah. But like, I just, uh, I, I'm not I, even, that's just my I'm, little County. I'm not I even mean, going to my place, my polling place, because I already mailed my, uh, mine out already. Right. I'm just saying in general, I think the Republicans like to go to the polls and they like to show up and, do their piece and the Democrats sit back and they'll do their mailing in and, and saying, Oh, that guy's going to vote. So I'm just going to wait here. I don't need to vote. Well, here's how lazy you know? I am. My polling place is one half a block that way. Okay. <laughs> and my post office is a half a block that way. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going, gee, what should I do? You know, do, do I want to go to the polling place or do I want to mail my ballot? Well, being in New York, is it, you know, I know that, again, I'm using my county as an example and it's nothing like New York or any big city, but do they actually have long lines anymore? I don't know. Uh, I, you I know, I, last time I went down there, it wasn't that long a line. It was pretty much going through pretty fast. And yeah. I think most of that is because of number one, the electronics. They're using electrical electronic books now, mm -hmm. so it's quicker to get through. You can, and the other thing is mail-ins. You don't even have to go down there, and a lot of people mail in. I actually had people coming in that had already mailed in their stuff, mm -hmm. and we had to stop them because, sorry, you already voted. No, I didn't. Yes, you did a month ago. At your kitchen table, and here's your signature. Oh, 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you're right. And then they go home. <laughs> There's no line. I had general. that happen twice in the last election. I guarantee you, in certain areas in this red state of Texas, people are going to be waiting in line for hours. Yeah, it's been rigged by the Republicans. Sure. They well, did do, it on you, do you have pre-voting at all there, or is it? They've shortened it to two weeks now. It used to be four weeks. Yeah, okay, so you, you have a two-week vo- vote. You have a two-week voting period, right? You can vote early for two weeks. Yeah, starting it, October. 21st. Because what was election day is now election month. I mean, to to yeah. say that they're they're going down to the wire now. <laughs> Any day now, we'll find out who's going to win. You know, I mean, Kamala's only got another twenty-seven days or twenty-six days. Blah blah blah. No, actually. She stopped having days a few days ago because everybody could vote then. Yeah, but then they're also not going to have the numbers that night. They're going to take two days no, they, to wait for, for votes reason. to come in. Why? Yeah, they, and let me ask you this. can't start counting for election day, according right. to some states. As someone who we works can't. the polls, answer me this question. Why is it when there are, like, mail-in ballots, mm-hmm. do they have to wait till election day to open them up? Right. Why can't they they open them up the minute they get them and start tabulating them? They they don't, I guess they don't want to have anybody say that they were messing with them. But when it comes election day, they start tearing shit open and they got people sitting in rooms, opening them up and sorting them out. And and then they actually, at least our county, puts them back in the envelopes and files them on a file. Well, I like the good old days where on on a Tuesday in November, you went down to your poll you voted, and then when voting stopped, they took those ballot boxes mm-hmm. and dumped them in a lake somewhere. <laughs> or a creek. That's how I like our politics. By way of a U-Haul. Huh? By way of a U-Haul. By way of a U-Haul. The post right. office is that way. Make a right. No, we'll go left. We'll go left. It's the Joe, it's the Joe <laughs> Kennedy technique. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah, it's, we just got ours today, and it's funny because they sent my daughters, and they sent my wife's, but I didn't get mine. Wait a minute, how big are those? How big are those? Oh, look at the size of I have of the that. same one, mine yeah. Were, mine were yeah. much smaller than those, I think. You know, these are... There's like a book in there, too. We got the book about three or four days ago. Of course, you have a lot of propositions and crap like that, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're so confusing. Bonds. Right. Yeah. Oh, God. I Here no we idea. had just a few things on the front, and on the back we had about six different proposals, and that was it. You know, none of which I took time to read. You know, <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm a responsible voter. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Sound like George Carlin. Hmm. <laughs> I just heard George Carlin talking like that the other day about mm-hmm. voting. Let me... Uh, 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 religion. Uh, uh, Josh, uh, yeah. do they have pre-voting in your neck of the woods? Oh, uh, yeah. You can vote by mail. Mm-hmm. And each county has a couple areas that are open for early voting several days a week. Oh, that's and good. You can good. go there and vote on the actual machine. Just like you do on election day, but it's open early. Now in California, your poll is it open only on November fifth uh, or whatever date that is? Yes. No. 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 What? For early. I run, I run a center for four days. Oh. Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday. When did that start? <laughs> well, that's the way it. our county does it. We, oh, I don't think in Santa Clara. I think in Santa Clara, I think it's just still the one day. Yeah, we consolidated our, you know, the garages and the churches and all that stuff are no longer. We just have why, four why, centers. Why, 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 why did we start doing this? Because the size of the population was getting greater? Or did we just say, hey, we just want to make it easier for people to vote? Doing well, what? The uh, election that got uh, Obama elected, lines were incredibly long i mean even though he won clearly and they were able to call it election night and everything the voting lines in that election that's right made it clear that 
you know, if that kind of turnout continued to happen, we were going to have real trouble. So we greatly expanded, you know, the way that people could vote, mm -hmm. options available to you to make it so that there wasn't a rush to the polls on election night, each year, election day. Kevin, are you in Monterey County? Where are you? No, San Benito. San Benito. Oh, okay. Oh, in California, is RFK still on the ballot? He was on mine. He was on yours? Yeah. I'm in Santa Clara County. I don't know if he's on. Well, he would have to be on all of them. Yeah, he would California. be on every county. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah he yeah. was on the ballot. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't there's on the certain, ballot here. There's a certain point when they're printing them that they can't take them off. Right. You know, that's that's been his problem in a lot of the states that he tried. Well, now, if you go out and you vote for RFK on that ballot, <laughs> how does it register itself for RFK or because yes. he has uh, gone over to the Trump side? Does it go to Trump? No, it'll go to no. RFK. RFK, just go to RFK and it'll be basically a non-vote. OK. Yeah. He can still get votes, but he's not going to get yeah. any enough. Yeah. Hmm. It's a yeah. complete waste of like, it's Yeah, it's like writing other. Right. <laughs> that's that's why they wanted him off the ballot, so that people yeah. who don't <laughs> want to vote for Trump and we're going to vote for him can't be like, oh, okay, you know, they can still vote for him to stick it to everybody, or at least right. that's what they think they're doing, you know. And, I mean, if they <laughs> vote for him instead of Trump, they're just helping Harris, but... Yeah. Which is why they wanted him off the ballot, you know, so he... He could help Trump out and get his big government job that he's been. Yeah. <laughs> can Bree hear us Brian now? Can you hear us, Bree? Oh, you can. Okay. So why aren't you saying anything? Or is here? <laughs> well, it's too noisy, right? Can you hear all the noise around me? Oh yeah. A little, yeah. little bit. Place I forgot. You, you can only come here with noise canceling headphones. It's just too loud. Yeah. yeah. People don't realize that. It's a real, you know, I'm, I'm big into sounds and stuff. And like most businesses, they don't, they don't think about it. And it's so noisy that it's, I don't know. I'm settling. Well, if you can hear me, I asked you earlier, there's a sign in back of you. Right in back of you, there's a sign. Yeah. What does it say? That's, Can you read that after living there long enough? <laughs> you want to know what it says? No, 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 no. That's not fair. <laughs> no, I can't read it. It's, it's, uh, it's in Hiragana. And that's, that's uh, kanji, but that's Hiragana. But I, I can recognize the alphabet, but I don't know what it says. I'd have to look it up. You want me to look it up? No, 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 you no, can no, say no. anything uh, and we'd believe you. <laughs> Josh is looking it up right now for you, so, you know. Work on that. It says, listen to Gabnet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ray, me how, wrong. <laughs> how are things going in your life? Are you doing a play or anything? Yeah, yeah, I'm. Uh, I am. I'm doing a, a play called Truce, which is about uh, the true story of when the, a platoon in the German army in World War One and one in in the British army called a truce on Christmas Day mm -hmm. and uh, joined each other and had a party and played soccer and did all these uh, mm -hmm. wonderful things together, and then were ordered to start shooting each other again the next day by the generals was this was this during world war ii or world war one world war one yeah because in world war one mm -hmm. they used to at night they would uh, they would get out of the trenches go to no man's land and play cards with each other and stuff yeah so this uh <laughs> this happened that's happened wow. yeah that's what it's about and it's about when it happened on christmas they were it was in an intense battle and um they all the I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but they, they called a truce on Christmas and they all got together and celebrated Christmas with each other and then started killing each other again the day after. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Crazy. The Republicans and Democrats can't even do that. So I'm playing, I'm playing a father of, of, um, 
one of the British soldiers, and I'm playing a uh, German general. Yeah. Is this play a new work? It is, uh, although it was done in 2014, but it's never been done again since then. It was a huge hit here in the Bay Area in 2014, and then they're doing it again. Oh, good. Yeah. How many nights are you doing it for? Uh, it's like... Like six performances a week for I think six weeks. Oh, really? That wow. many performances? Wow. Yeah. One, two, wow, three. that's a no, lot. No, five. Excuse me. Five, five, uh, one, two, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, five, six performances a week for six weeks. Yeah. Oh wow, wow. Well, they know it's going to sell a lot because it did the first time, and this so. And how big is your part? Oh, both my they're they're pretty. Both my parts are pretty small. M most of most of the play is about the soldiers and the and the wives, mm -hmm. uh, and so all the young people have the big parts, and then like us old, the few of us old folks are have kind of small roles. But now, do you get paid for this? Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Actors' Equity? Uh, no, I dropped out of the union. Oh, why did you drop out? Because um, in the Bay Area, if you're um, an older white man, uh, after the Black Lives Matter and and all that, um, mm -hmm. there's almost no work. And it's like it's like they don't. There's like very few parts for people in my demographic, and it's just like the same three guys who get all the roles in the union. And I and I I just was like, I want to do this, so I I I dropped out. But you can still and do it. And then I regretted it, and I tried to get back in, and the union won't let me back in. Why won't they let you back in? Because I dropped out, and there's some rule where if you drop out, you, the only way you can get back in is, is if somebody offers you a contract, and then you still aren't in after that. They have to get a committee together and just decide whether or not they're going to let you back. Yeah. Sounds about right. But <laughs> were you ever a member Even of though I'd been in the union for like 20 years. Well, I, uh, I'm in, I'm still in SAG after it. Yeah, me too. I'm still in SAG after it. But I don't pay anything to them. I'm oh, of because... age where I am now have I have a senior, whatever. Well, that's good. You know, and gonna so... die anyway. Huh? You're gonna die soon anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't I'm so worry, mad I'm at you. I'm going with you, so don't. I'll get upset about it. Just bummed him out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the I'm... latest thing. You ready for this? So, you know, the other day I was having trouble walking up the street, and I am beginning to think it's this physical therapy that's screwing me up. Mm. I don't know why, but my walking up the street has gotten worse and worse as opposed it... to better and better, and I've been doing these exercises every day. Alex, I stopped doing my physical therapy exercises for the same reason, and I'm feeling way better now. And when I was doing the exercises, it was getting worse. You were having trouble walking and doing things like yes, that? Yes, my yeah. back was killing me. Well, and it anyway. was getting worse when I did the exercises. So I said, screw the exercises. And now it's just getting better on its own. I feel way better. So Marjorie is worried that I won't be able to walk through the airports. So what's she ordering me up? A wheelchair. Oh God! And I told you know, her I don't want a wheelchair. Get... I said I'd rather I suffer in trying to walk than use a wheelchair. But You're she's ordered over. me up a wheelchair in France, and she's ordered me up a wheelchair uh, here at. Uh, 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 where are we leaving? I think we're leaving from JFK. <laughs> don't yeah. get a wheelchair. Get a scooter, electric one. You'll have more fun. Electric scooter. Yeah. yeah, those yeah, are great. Yeah, but you see, the good thing with uh, with uh, with a uh, uh, with a, uh, a wheelchair, especially an electric one, is as you're going down, you can hit people with your cane. You know, <laughs> yeah. get out of my way! I'm old and I oh, need I, this I thing. Play hockey all the time when I use those scooters, man. So she's go she's, to Disneyland. You just cruise along. And boom. Yeah, I mean, we may when we're in Paris hire a car to take us around everywhere for a day. You know. And go to the various places we want to go, and then I don't have to, you know, walk as much and so on. So, 
Hey, Alex, I, I'll say it again. I really recommend you do this uh, virtual reality, Notre Dame virtual well, I reality. I know. I'm, I'm going to mention that to Marjorie. Yeah, it's just amazing. You'll feel like you're in a Star Trek holograph. It's incredible. Yeah? Yeah. Holodeck, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah, Seriously. Well, I uh, So anyway, so that's my whole thing now is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in a wheelchair. I feel like uh, Lionel Barrymore and Dr. Kildare. You know, me. What the hell? <laughs> I love that show, Doctor Kildare. Kildare, yeah. Remember yeah. that? Well, you come over here, I'll come over there. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was my Lionel Barrymore, folks. It was, <laughs> that was good. It's the best impression I do. <laughs> 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 I used to love doing Lionel Barrymore. That was uh, really good. So wow. we got about two minutes left. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else that we need to talk about? Well, we had all that uh, flooding and everything down in Florida. And uh, my feeling is, except for the three people I know who live down there, uh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I really don't. Dude, that was coming. Actually, I do because I got an aunt and uncle with down there. Yeah, yeah. How are they doing? Did they have to I don't leave? Know, I haven't heard. Oh. Hmm? They don't what? It's my uncle. It's my uncle used to be the CEO of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah. Huh? Well, we um, um, it's it's kind of you know it uh, who do well who do we have down there? Who's the who? There's one guy that calls this show, and I my name. Well, Albert in Florida, isn't he? Well, Albert, and he, but he's here now. He's staying with oh. us at this very moment. Uh, oh. And uh, then my friend's uh, Chris, Lori is in northern Florida. And then we got, what's his name, down in, and I'm worried about him. And I, Mark. Huh? Mark. Thinking of Mark. Yeah, Mark. Mark, yeah. That's right. What's his last name? Uh, I can't Thorner. remember. Uh, 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 Mark Thorner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Mark Thorner, I've got to write him because his part of the neck of the woods was affected by the, uh, the hurricanes. So, yeah. you know, it's it uh, it's horrible down there. It's just terrible. Uh, but, you know, um, what can I say? But I, it's, it turns out I know more people down there than I thought I knew. So oh, I also have two, fr two other friends who live down there who then live up here during the summer in Vermont and live down there during the winter, and they're down there now. So who knows what the thing is. But anyway, let's, let's, let's play the theme, okay? There it is. Okay. You can hear it, right, guys? Yeah. Right. Yep. Hey, listen, that's it for tonight. That's it for this week. Um, I want to thank uh, our good friend, uh, uh, Josh for being with us tonight and also uh, Charlie for being with us. It's always good having you, Charlie. Nice to see you, Steve, and your health is good? Good. Yep. That, that, that's all that matters. Jeff, your, your health is okay, Jeff? I went to my cardiology the other day and he said, you're golden. You're, you're golden? That means you're dead next week. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you to Ray. I appreciate you being here and last night and tonight. And it'd be nice if you're here next week, too. We, we, we love having you here. And, of course, look at that. He's eating again, ladies and gentlemen. He's chopsticking his way through another program. Uh, it's Bree. And, of course, uh, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it as well. All of you, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And uh, uh, I will fade to me. And uh, I tell everybody to listen next for the intersection, which is here with the lovely and attractive Amy Manuel. I'll see you again on Monday when we are around here at 4 o'clock on uh, Facebook with a program we like to call Alex Bennett's Pop-Up. And then we'll be back here next Wednesday at uh, 1030 Eastern Time. I'll see you then. Until then, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later. <laughs>